whole life I've been eating pizza. And when I got older, I started making them. You might have seen me doing a whole lot of making. See, when I started my pizza journey, like most curious makers, I wanted to know about the first ever pizza. And this was it, the Neapolitan pizza, 1800. Bread bakers in Napoli started using their leftover dough to make round flat breads. Sometimes they put a little tomato sauce, garlic, olive oil and oregano. Simple but delicious. Delizioso. Plus, they were cheap, making them a popular food fast. Ecco la prima vera pizza. La pizza napoletana. Fast forward and pizza is now the most eaten food on the planet. I wanted to know more. I went all in. First to Napoli, eat all the pizza I can get my hands on. Then I started growing wheat, grinding it into flour, designing my own wood-fired oven, built a greenhouse, grew San Marzano tomatoes, made my own sauce, started a YouTube channel, opened a pizza bar, shipped my oven all over the globe and designed the most used pizza calculator on the internet. I literally gave the last 10 years of my life to pizza. Going deeper and deeper into the pizza hole, I found the official Neapolitan dough recipe, given out by the Associazione Ferrace Pizza Napolitana. After baking thousands of them, I was ready. I could now make a tutorial for the people who had bought my pizza oven. We filmed an easy to understand movie, placed it on YouTube, and it went crazy. 10,000, 100,000. Before I knew, I had over a million views. It went pretty insane. What mattered most was that the video was actually helping people all over the world make pizza. So overcome with joy, I wasn't thinking about the viewers that didn't own a wood-fired oven. Probably most of them were baking a traditional recipe in their modern home ovens. And so the question remains, how to make a Neapolitan pizza in your home oven? It's crazy, but after all of those pizzas, I never ever tried to bake one in the home oven. So I went to pizzadoughcalculator.com, choose Neapolitan style, and made it just like all of those pizzas before. I baked it just like I normally do with a Neapolitan pizza. I take it out after one and a half minutes. Ooh, nope, it's not ready. Seven minutes. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Mmm, that's not looking too good. See the crust is all pale and white. Look at where the tomato sauce used to be. It's, it got all dried. There's like, it's hard as a cracker. Let's not even start about the base. This used to be a piece of bezel. It's now shit. I feel bad because I've been teaching people how to make the original Neapolitan pizza but it just doesn't work in your home oven. I don't know. Garbage. Ahem. Language, young man. Here is what went wrong. The original Neapolitan pizza is baked with fire, heating the pizza through perfection, radiation, and conduction. The fire will heat up the air in the oven, going up and over the pizza. This hot flow of air is called Convection. It will cook the ingredients, melt the cheese, and inflate the crust of your pizza. Magnificent! The flames will not only push the air up, they will also transmit their heat sideways. This is called radiation. The radiation will give your pizza extra warm, causing the crust to rise and color even more, leaving beautiful little char marks called leopard spotting. These two types of heat will warm the floor of the oven and almost like a battery it will start to charge itself by the heat of the flames. The moment you place the pizza on the heated floor it will start to release its heat right into the pizza base. This is called conduction and will give your pizza base a golden brown color and a crunchy texture in no time. So all of this time people have been making a high heat recipe in a low heat oven. They were eating average pizzas, where they could have been eating great pizzas. I gotta make this right. Four months went by, and I couldn't stop thinking about all those horrible, hard, dry pizzas. After more research, I discovered we were not the first one having this problem. 1900s, a group of brave people took the boat all the way from Italy to the promised land, America, to build a new future for themselves and their families. They couldn't bring much, but they brought their love for pizza. 
And naturally, some of these people started pizza places. The only problem being, the ovens they would find were coal-fired bread ovens. What's this? Con questa bassa temperatura non cuocerà mai. But they had to make it work. And so they started looking at the pizza itself. First the dough and later the toppings. After lots of experimenting, they figured out that when you add sugar, it will caramelize during the bake, bringing back color, and with color comes flavor. The problem of the pale looking crust was solved. Now, to prevent the dough from drying and getting hard as a rock, they used olive oil. The oil in the dough would keep it supple and soft, even when being cooked for a long time. Second problem, solved. They had their dough game on lock, but still, the toppings and the sauce would lose all the freshness during the longer bake. So what they did was take off the bezel, keep the tomato sauce, and here comes the trick. Get rid of the high moisture mozzarella and swap it for low moisture cheese. Grate it and cover the whole pizza with it. Bake it, and there you go. Questa è la New York pizza, fucking great. In the next 100 years, the New York pizza took the world by a storm. It's probably the most eaten pizza in the world. Boom, here we are. 21st century, our ovens are now electric. So is our phone. Let's see how this works. Just like the New Yorkers, we are trying to make a pizza in a low heat oven. And since they already figured out a dough that works best with these temperatures, we're using their New York style dough recipe. Wanna know how to make this dough? And check out this video here. But first, let's have a look at our oven. For confection, turn on the fan in the back of the oven. For radiation, turn on the broiler in the top of the oven. This, in combination with the use of our New York pizza dough, makes the pizzas come out looking great. But what about the third source of heat? What about the sizzling hot oven floor that bakes every pizza to crispy perfection? Let's see if this will work. Okay. That looks pretty promising. A nice color on the crust. But what about the base? I... Yes, I was afraid that would happen. Not cooked at all. Way too pale. Shit! So even though steel of the baking tray will store and conduct heat very well, making steel the perfect material, it cannot store lots of heat due to its thickness. You see, the thicker the steel, the longer it can store and later on conduct heat into the pizza. So all we need to do is get a thicker piece of steel. And what a beautiful coincidence, you can find this 5 kilo bad boy on statlermate.com. Fill in the discount code, keep it steel and get yourself a discount deal. Great, we got our oven floor, conduction, check. Place the pizza steel in one of the higher racks where it gets hottest. Preheat at max temperature for 45 minutes. Flour your work service, get your dough ball and start pressing from the center all the way to the sides. But don't touch the rim, we want to keep those beautiful air bubbles inside the dough untouched. This way we will create a big bubbly crust inside the oven. Now gently stretch. Lightly sauce the dough with crushed Somersana tomatoes. And leave one and a half centimeters of outer rim uncovered. To round up, we got our three types of heat. We made use of the New York style pizza dough. Now there's one last trick, the double bake. Place the pizza with only sauce on the hot steel. Bake it until the crust is starting to get some color. Take it out. Add a bit of sauce, your cheese, basil, a little bit of oil. Now we pop it back into the oven, but this time only for one and a half minute. This is to mimic the short bake in a high heat oven, where the pizza is normally baked for only one and a half minute, preventing all the toppings from slowly drying and looking sad. Doing a double bake keeps everything nice and fresh. There we go. Oh yes, baby. Look at that beauty. 
kebab that looks amazing. The crust, it had a beautiful rice. We even have a tiny bit of leopard spotting. It has a beautiful bounce. Its interior is open, fragrant, with a pillowy softness. The base baked golden brown, crispy, while the center of the pizza stayed soft, delicate, moist, filled with bold flavors of fresh mozzarella, ripe tomatoes, basil, olive oil. Yes, we did it. A Neo New York mm, modern style pizza. It doesn't really matter what it's called. What matters is, is that we make amazing pizza. And just like makers have been doing for the last hundreds of years, we work with the tools we were given. Driven by our passion, our skills, a little help from my web shop, we made the best possible pizza we could. And that's what really matters. See you in the next one. Peace.